When a person is concerned with taking pictures, however, he worries about the choice of scene to be preserved, an option that separates out one piece to be remembered from the overall scene. Thus we become locked entirely into the visual problem alone. We abandon any effort at overall impression. What might have been an authentic experience is reduced to mere spectacle. Furthermore, even if you are a specialist, you become preoccupied with manipulating and fussing with the camera. The lighting and the search for the best angle lock you into a technical exercise that radically, block, that radically blocks out any intellectual process or reflection. The offering of yourself to the wind, the sea, or the flow of people. Even more, these concerns prevent the surging of deep exaltation in the presence of something unique. If you are a Christian, you are prevented from thanking God. No, the camera is in command. You no longer really see anything. You look at and hunt for what you are going to photograph. When the picture is finally taken, notice that all travellers suddenly lose interest in everything else. The job to be done has been taken care of. What else could they possibly do in the midst of the ruins of the Parthenon? Suddenly they wonder what they are doing there. Once the memory has been frozen on film, they are suddenly bored. The picture diminishes enormously the experience of a trip. It externalizes it, prevents internalization, and concentrates everything on the visual souvenir. Looking at the picture later recalls memories, a certain gesture or word spoken. That is all there is. It recalls no deep perception. This is obvious when one listens to the talk and conversation of people who show slides of their trips. Everything is reduced to superficialities. Just as the process of picture-taking hacked off one piece of the overall reality that was to be lived, in the same way the picture, once shown, obliterates the living memory.